Okay, everybody ready? Okay, uh, my name is Patricia Cantu. I'm the assistant chief of the Houston Police Department. Uh, today, earlier, we obviously we got called out for this scene. It initially started as a uh, kidnapping, as a call for help. The family got a call from somebody with a kidnapping. So HPD was investigating. The investigation led us to this house in which we had a search warrant to be able to try to find the rescue of that one person. That one person led us to over 90 people. So in the 90 people, this was a big scene. The conditions, it, was, it wasn't dirty and that wasn't the point. The point was the way they were put in rooms together. Over 90 people in a two-story home, a two-story home that they were like, they couldn't, they can barely stand. They had to ask permission to go to the restroom. Uh, deplorable conditions. Some of them had eaten in three days and haven't had water. So some of them needed medical attention, dehydration. So when we got here, obviously the scene is being processed still. It's a long scene only because it's taken this much time to get them medical attention. Uh, our officers immediately took the time to take money out of their pockets, buy the water for the, for the victims uh, and, and the food. So we were able to feed, feed them. And, and uh, of course, HFD was a big part of it. The health department, they came and they all were tested. There was a process It obviously was long because it's still ongoing to make sure that nobody needed immediate attention. And in regards to the transport, HFD handled the transports. Right now we had um, 90 something people out of the, the group, five tested positive. How many? Five. So five tested positive, okay? So here, we're still processing the scene. Uh, this is a public concern since there's positive mixed with people that work that tested negative. So here we're taking every step as when we're, we're going to consider it a healthy self, health and safety issue. We are going to conduct a criminal investigation and assist with federal agencies. However, we would not be the primary. Okay, we do understand this was a kidnapping. And this is how it started. So we're collaborating with the federal agencies and with the health department and also with HFD that's helping us out here with the scene. So that right now, that's all we're doing. Like I said, they're still being processed. They're still getting COVID tested. Since there are so many people, they're going to be transported. We don't know where yet. So that information is not going to be available. And it's only to protect the, the persons, the victims, and, and to make sure the, the agencies don't have a hard time. We will work together still with all the agencies here. We're very grateful everybody was involved. Um, and, and that's all that we have for right now. So we appreciate y'all being here, letting them out. This is a risk very unnecessary and very cruel, documented or not. This is a horrible offense. Um, it nearly broke our hearts. And you see officers in there, it, it's heartbreaking to see people treated that way. Uh, we're human beings and regardless of citizenship, we deserve, a, uh, they deserve the right to be here and to be treated uh, respectfully and with human dis decency. So that's all right now. If, if the, Mr. Pennington wants to speak and on behalf of the uh, fire department, Uh, Deputy Chief, Chief Commander 37, Houston Fire Department. Uh, we had several uh, transport units. Five were transported. Uh, we did treat it as a triage, but the patients that were transported were in no, uh, no trauma. It was just medical problems. So they're all taken care of. So like uh, uh, the Assistant Police Chief stated that it, it, all this is still under investigation. Uh, we just came down here to give you the information that uh, that you've been patiently waiting for. So basically, there are still people being tested for COVID. We don't know the, the final number. No, we don't. Given what you know about COVID-19, how likely do you think it is that more people of the 90 have COVID? That's hard to say. That's that's a science that nobody knows right now. So uh, it's undetermined. Does it make different it's variety, so we can't. That's that's a police question. They speak Spanish. They all speak Spanish. We weren't because there's so many. The ones that I've spoken to were from El Salvador and Honduras. The other ones I can't. I can't say they were from Mexico or other places, but they were uh, Spanish speaking. Do you know the age of the, the younger person? No, we don't. No, we don't. How long? Can, 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 we, can we have you stand back in the middle? Oh, how, how long have they been here? Uh, some of them have been here for two days. Some of them just got here last night. Some of them have been here. It's a variety. It just depends on who you ask. So 
it doesn't appear that somebody's been here for more than a week or two. Do you know, do you know where they crossed the border? No, I don't. Can you tell us how many countries that you guys were able to find out they were from? So far, the, what I spoke to, I did to speak to two people, and one of them was from Honduras and El Salvador. But other than that, you know, like I said, the communication, I, I didn't want to get too intrusive because I still wanted to make sure that they knew who we were there to help. I didn't want to focus on immigration. I didn't want to focus on legality because that wasn't the main issue. The concern was their health, their safety, and getting them back to you being treated like human beings. And what's, so what's, exact, what's the exact number that you have right now? You said more than 90. More than have you 90. narrowed down the gender? Is it still five women? or have there, you guys... No, there's, more, there's five women. That, that, that's, that's easy to tell you, but the rest of them are male. We saw two people in handcuffs. We saw two people in handcuffs. Were any people arrested so Both far? Both of them are in handcuffs just as precaution to get on the bus. But it doesn't mean they're in custody. So that, that, that just because they're in handcuffs doesn't mean they're in custody. I'm sorry, go ahead. How many smugglers are you talking about? We haven't yet. And, we, and there's a reason why we can't identify the suspects right now because people don't want to identify them out of fear. Okay, so we have to know that human trafficking is, is something that people fear and they're afraid that their loved ones will be hurt. that person among the people recognized? Yes. Do you know if they were given food at any time while they were there? You know, a little bit more about the conditions? They were the conditions are, this is what, what it is. They, they, they were, I guess they were preparing food, that I can tell you. We were, I was hesitant. I said, we're not going to feed them the food that they were preparing them because I don't know what was in it. You know, to contain that many people, I was going to assume there's something in there to, to help them sleep, groggy. But that's my assumption. It's not a fact. But it's, I wanna, it's coming. It's coming. In uh, I have no idea. I assume, and because I want to protect the people inside, we went ahead and took money out of our own pockets and bought them pizza and water. Can you so, clarify their clothing or the, how they were? Because we saw clothes come in, we saw bags of clothes. Is that because of the COVID aspect, or were they just vulnerable in underwear? What was what was their state? In all human trafficking, they normally take off, take their clothes, and they leave them with just their um, their underclothing. That's it. With the ratio of women. Uh, to men, there is some concerning. Would you agree? I mean, nine, five women among um, all those many men. Uh, do you have any signal about any kind of abuse, potential abuse uh, of the women? No, right now we don't. But we're still talking to them, and, and our investigation will continue. And yeah. Too soon to speak of whatever the investigation is still ongoing, but we have seen instances like this where smugglers hold these people ransom and then expect the loved ones to come and see and pick them up. Do you think this is possibly? That's why the family called out. It could be. Help. It could be they were trying to, it, it could be, but the, the whole point of it is uh, they lost communication and they were worried. And very well they should be. Is, is that it? any of the women there is uh, potentially a one involved in this, uh, you know, from the... We don't know that. Side? We don't know that yet and only because, like I said, people are hesitant to identify anybody. So right now we're going to try to focus on their health. Do you know if the renters of this house, do you know anything about who were the renters of the house? Not yet. Not yet. We, we do have a little bit of information that it's being rented, but we're still in the process of doing all that. Is it possible the smugglers got away? It's possible, but it's also possible that they're among the being treated. So we, we don't know. We don't want to assume that then we do. Like I said, we do want to focus on the human decency, getting them the health care, and try to get them to where they need to go safely and just focus on their health and also ensure that the COVID outbreak doesn't doesn't uh, burst, spread, spread so rapidly that we can't contain it. So that is going to be monitored. That's going to be our primary concern. Uh, like I said, we don't want any additional outbreaks here in Houston. And where do they go next? We have no idea yet. So, you know, that stuff is developing. And because of the uh, isolation and quarantine and stuff like that, we don't have any idea where they're going. Now, clearly, I think all this has affected you Absolutely, absolutely. Anytime you see people being mistreated, it doesn't matter what race, culture, where you come from. There's no excuse for people to be treated, mistreated like that, not being fed, not giving the, the basic common things that you require as a human being, not being allowed to use a restroom, not asking permission, not having a space to lay down or just barely sit. That's that, that's, most, that's horrific. And you're right, it does affect us. These are the things we have to do. But I commend the officers that 
that cared enough to speak with them, to talk to them, to pull out money out of their, out of their own pocket. How do we get them closed? We were trying to figure out how to do it, but you know what, it got done, and I'm very proud of the team right here with HFD and the other agencies that showed up. Uh, we're very proud that everybody, we, I can honestly say I believe we did a professional job, and once again, it wasn't an issue about immigration status, it was about treating people with the decency and respect that they deserve. Do you think a person will have to come again? Patricia Cantu, last name is C-A-N-T-U. And then uh, your rank? Assistant Chief of the Houston Police Department. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna I'm gonna give a quick bit uh, in Spanish.